uh, this morning for the next uh, three Sundays, like uh, Father and Lord has said, we're going to be just sharing um, to begin to teach in the presence of Pastor Tulu is a major is a major exam because I'm not a teacher. Uh, I have never been a teacher, but this morning I will try to say some things. But the beauty of it is I can hide under the the theme of this series of meetings. Say so it's moments, so I will probably be sharing my own personal experiences in ministry more than preaching, so that it doesn't score me low on teaching. Praise God. Praise God. So this morning, we're going to be starting our discussion under the broad theme of the heart of fire for success in ministry. The heart of fire for success in ministry. I think that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. And I pray that God will help us to navigate this in the next few days. Uh, talking to ministers uh, and workers is not always a very easy assignment because these are people who know. And in a place like the House of Prayer, I'd like to acknowledge, and I think you need to, I like to do power clap. Power clap is just once at the same time, like this. Let's practice it. Again. Okay. So give power clap to all the Sunday school teachers here. Okay. Good. Because I... I've been asking myself, maybe because of you guys, I'm going to be a Sunday school teacher very soon. Praise God. Okay, so we will be starting by looking at the heart of fire for success in ministry. Uh, you will have seen some uh, images about ministry and the heart uh, on the social media. You see that there are some that you see the heart and you see fire. Okay, so that's, so just look at it that there is fire in your heart. Okay. And one of the things about, I mean, my, my wife runs a family ministry called Family Matters. And one of the things we always say, or she would always say, is that if you are in courtship and if there is no fire in your heart towards the other person, don't even try. Praise God. So it's not about the looks it's not about the thoughts. It's about the kind of fire that is burning in your heart. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. Paul speaking. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. He said, As for you, always be sober minded. Endure suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Praise God. Paul was speaking to Timothy. And God, through this word, is speaking to every Timothy in this meeting this morning. We need to be sober-minded. And that is talking straight to your heart. And your suffering in your flesh. Then in terms of work, do the work of an evangelist by sharing the gospel of the good news of Christ's incarnation, suffering, death, and resurrection, and second coming. That's a full gospel. That is the only way and the only condition by which we can fulfill ministry. And a lot of people, believe me honestly, are not in ministry, though they are in church, though they are pastors, though they are bishops, though they are whatever the title they give themselves. One of my friends, the first time he ever traveled out of Nigeria, after being in ministry for about three years, he traveled to Ghana. And he was stranded to the point that he didn't have money to feed. We had to send money. He just went for two weeks. We sent money for him to feed and to come back. And to encourage him, as soon as he came, I brought him to my church. And he said, everywhere we have taken this gospel to all over the world. 
everybody has received the gospel. And the only world he knew was just Ghana after Nigeria. And uh, the next thing is that he started bearing the title of apostle. He says an apostle. Praise God. And there are a lot of apostles, you know, uh, there are a lot of apostles. But again, for those of us who are pastors, we are not well regarded because he's just a pastor. But the truth is that if you're going to fulfill ministry, it's not about the title you carry, it's about the impact you make. And making impact is about becoming significant in the lives of people and making people to also become significant. And for you to do that, we will start from where we stopped in the video yesterday morning. Luke 3.16. Luke 3.16, John. John who himself was in ministry and was the most sought after man of God in his time at the time he was speaking in Luke chapter 3 verse 16. He was the most sought after. He was in his own redemption camp and everybody all over the world at that time was looking for him. And the Bible said, he said to everyone who was around him, who was thinking it was the most important thing after Father Abraham. He said, I need to baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He, when he comes, shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm sure at that point, for those who were with him, they would have thought something was wrong with him. I mean, you are the best. I mean, for some of us, not people like you, for people like me, uh, that the Geo is the ultimate man of God in my time. Praise God. So if somebody now says there's another man coming after that Geo, I would think, oh, you don't know anything. Praise God. What else do you do? Praise God. So that's the kind of thing that he was saying to them. But the truth of the matter is this. Because John had a revelation and he had an assignment and he had a ministry to just prepare the way for the one that was coming. He understood his role, he understood his ministry. And he didn't want to be overpumped or overhyped beyond his capacity. Now, where does that lead us here, child of God? If you are going to fulfill ministry, the first condition is that you must know your ministry. You must know what God has called you to do. And a lot of people say, oh, I've been called to be a teacher. I say, so I'm a lecturer. No people say so in church. They say, I'm, a, I'm called to be a teacher. Oh, somebody say, I'm called to be a preacher. Praise God. Hello. What's the difference between preacher and teacher inside church? Praise God. Praise God. Oh, say, oh, say the teacher will expound the word. So the preacher, what does he do? Do you understand? See, people, I have seen people tell me that their ministry is to preach. That's not a ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like a, a, a lecturer in the verse is his calling is to teach. It's obvious. Or a, a person in, a, in, in hospital service, medical service, or medical profession say, my, my job is to care for people. Hello? Are you saying something different? No, from the gate man in the, in the hospital environment to the most important, uh, the most senior person, uh, group uh, medical director, everybody is taking care of people. So you can't say, oh, hey, my ministry is to care for because I'm in. No, 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 no. The truth is that even in this environment, what is your own personal revelation about the assignment that you have? So, so John was telling them, that he said, you know what? The truth is that you guys respect me, you believe me, and I honestly appreciate you guys. I am doing a lot. I'm baptizing another boy. There is a guy that is coming. When he comes, he's going to do this. He said, I know, sir, you shouldn't be talking like this. And he went ahead at some point. He said, you know what? He must increase why I decrease. That is his ministry. His ministry is to decrease so that one man can increase. Nothing more. So he, he was not about to compete with the man he had not seen. But today we even compete with the one we have not even heard of. Praise God. Because my ministry is better than your ministry. 
Oh, we, we've had those things. I mean, some of us have been trained in that way at some point in life. But the truth of the matter is this. It is the part of the ignorance that we have about the calling of God upon our lives. First and foremost, nobody has a calling beyond the caller. What is a calling? In our culture, when you say, uh, go and call this person, and you now go to the person, what do you, what do you say? He said, what? what? He is what? He is calling you. Hello? Now, that is calling you. Is it that you are working? Is it you are coming to cook? He is calling you. What do you do? Who do you go to? The caller, that's all. So our calling is primarily unto Jesus Christ, full stop. What is your calling? Somebody say, I don't know my calling. Excuse me, it's because you are not born again. Or you are not even sure that you are born again. If you are born again, your primary calling is unto Jesus Christ, full stop. Now, whatever he tells you to do from that point, you do. Oh, somebody says, well, my ministry is to sing. That's good. But what is your calling? Your calling is not to sing. Hello, ma. Hello, sir. Your calling is not to sing. But we hear those things. So we use the, 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 the platform and we misunderstand it for the calling. My calling is not to preach. My calling is not to teach. My calling is not to prophesy. By the grace of God, I prophesy. But that is not my calling. I heard my calling clearly. God gave me a word clearly. But it took time, it took many years of being in a Christian before I heard, I heard it clearly. And he gave me exact words. Go and preach the gospel of fruitfulness to my people. Lose those who are bound by the spirit of unproductivity. You are my fruitful minister. That's my calling. To make people to maximize their resources with available resources. Results. I'm sorry, results with available resources. That is my calling. Every other thing I do around it is just how to achieve those callings. Help you to maximize your potentials. Help you to maximize the results that you have. Praise God. That is what God has called me to do. And I am not afraid, I'm not ashamed to run that race. Now, there are many tools that God has given us to do that. Teaching, preaching, prophesying. All those things will make those things happen. Praise God. And that's what John was saying. Because it's important for us to know our calling in the house of God. A lot of us, we are in church. We get easily offended. We get easily pushed off or pissed off rather. Because we really don't know why we are in church. I mean, I, I had an experience many years ago. It was the most embarrassing painful and really hurting experience I've ever had. Each time I remember it, I feel like crying. I was already a pastor. I was a pastor in charge of a parish. In those days, there was no zone. So it was just pastor in charge of parish and area pastor. No zone. And I was so active because I already knew where God was calling me. God has called me to help pastors long before I even became a minister. I, my our ministry is to help pastors to succeed. That is what I do. So I've always been like that. So anything pastor wanted to do, I will do. Even after I became a pastor in charge of parish, those days, if I once became a parish pastor, you were a king. You, nobody could talk to you again. But I was still running after my own boss. And to the extent that people who are calling me in Yoruba language those days, our, our, our pastor in charge of area was Pastor Allen. They were calling me Aja Allen. And guess what? I had a master's degree. I was doing very well in corporate work. Pastor Allen did a hard only school sat. He was actually a clerical officer. He, he was living in a room at Palo. I arranged to get his first car for him. Yet, they called me his dog. And in that arrangement, now, in those days, they thought they were despising me. But you see, I, I, I had joy in doing that. I had joy. When I said I had joy, I had joy. I derived joy in doing it because for me, I had always known that my assignment is to support. I, I, I mean, I tell people, that, I mean, for example, when I was in the, I was in the bank industry for, for about 15, 20 years, and I kept saying, I'm not a banker. I'm a bank worker. 
One day I will leave. Though even after I left, I went to become chairman of a bank. I ran a bank. I bought. The truth is that I have never seen myself as a banker. Praise God. But banking was a platform for me to first express myself, then earn income to take care of my family. Praise God. Now, you, you need to understand some of these basic things. Now, wh why am I going into that? Now, when you know what God has called you to do, you don't feel ashamed. Now, in those days we were nine, I was the least, I was the youngest, I was the last pastor to be, to be ordained and to be appointed as a pastor in the nine, in the, among the nine of us in that area. But guess what? They were all older. They, they came to ministry before me. They called me a dog. They were all rich at that point. But from nowhere, one testimony, it was supposed to be a despising statement to me. But it's a testimony looking back now. One of those people, in fact, the, 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 one of the guys who used to lay a hand on me as a worker, I will fall under anointing. One day say, ah, now wow, Pastor Wale, you have now become general overseer. I say, what happened? In Yoruba, you are the one now sending us around Nigeria to go and preach. You know what happened? It got to a point that I became so busy, I could have about 10, 11 invitations on a Sunday around Nigeria. And I will not be able to, if I even at some point around Europe and Nigeria, I will not be able to force, I'll say, okay, eh, Egmo, yes, sir. They said they are looking for who has anointing like you, like I said, you know, you are the one that trained me. You can go there. You can go there. So I started sending them. That's what it became. And as all that was happening, God was blessing us even financially. Such that when some of them would come and say, sir, I want to buy a car and I have a challenge. I said, okay, don't worry. I will I'll write a check for you. And I was still a pastor like them. If I, one of them called me and said, wait, I, I remember when you left banking. You said you wanted to be serving God. I, now, how come you are the one giving us money? I, anointing you have, money you have, what is the problem? I, I said, nothing, it's just God. No. He said, no, you have, to, you have to tell me. It's like some of us don't know the secret of this thing. You have to tell. I said, there's no secret. It's God. But what am I trying to explain? That dog. Today. Where I stand to the glory of God in ministry, they can't stand there. They cannot. Even in the RCCG structure, of course, in terms of, oh, you are pastor in charge of your province and all that, they are big people. But when we talk about making impact in this RCCG, nobody knows them. Praise God. Now, it is about knowing your ministry. One day, one pastor was boasting to me. He said, I know pastor, so, so, so. I know daddy, so, so, so. I know pastor, this, this, this. I know pastor, this. I know this pastor, this AGO, this SADGO, this special, whatever. I know them. I said, ah. So, as he was boasting, he said, all of them, they call me pastor. They call me pastor, eh, pastor Taiwo. They call me pastor Taiwo. I said, okay. So, when he finished, I said, all those people, they call me Wale. <laughs> he said, oh. I said, I'm the house boy. I have served all of them. That they don't, I said, they don't call me pastor. They call me Wale. I hope you understand the difference. And now the person boasting to me, I am at least four levels of promotion in RCC higher than him. At the time, I was talking, it was just, I was, I was a pastor in charge of probably, he was a pastor in charge of area. I said, there is any door you can never enter. In age, I was more than 12 years, I mean, I mean, I'm still, I'm still more than 12 years older than him. But what am I trying to explain? It is about you understanding what God has called you to do. Because once you understand what God has called you to do, then the rest is very easy. Praise God. And frustration will be very far from you. Praise God. Now, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me try and show you this, and you, 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 you will get uh, an understanding of it. Now, John said he will baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, John was already saying, you know what? I am baptizing you with what? 
Just unto repentance. I'm just helping you to be clean, to be prepared for the man who is coming. Now, all I am doing is not enough to make you fulfill destiny. It's only enough to make you to make heaven. Hallelujah. So, I don't have the anointing to empower you. The one who's going to empower you is coming. Now, it's important for you to know what God has called you to do. And that is the truth of the matter. Now, a minister in any church is not empowered to do certain things. But somebody say, well, what does Pastor Tolu know? Maybe it's the same Bible we all carry. It's not to read the Bible and preach. Yes, now. It's the same Bible. It's the same Bible that um, uh, Dix was reading, that his, his companions were reading, when he wrote a whole compendium of commentary. But we don't have the same revelation. We don't have the same calling. He said, I am here to prepare you to receive empowerment. Just like in medicine, somebody wants to go to, for, for, for surgery, there are people they call theater nurses. Praise God. Their job is to prepare the person's body to be ready for the surgery. Then the anesthetician or whatever comes, he prepares you for anesthetic. Now, the, the, the surgeon is the, for, for, forgive my language, is the one that just took an unquote, the least job. After everybody is ready, are you guys ready now? Everything okay? Everybody ready? This ready? This ready? Everything ready? Okay, let's go, guys. He just goes there. He cuts. He doesn't even sew. <laughs> he does not even sew. And he walks away. And guess what? All the nurses are excited. We did the surgery. We did the surgery. Oh, glory be to God. In fact, you see them coming to share testimony. How many doctors have you heard share testimony before about patients? It's nurses who share testimonies. So where are the nurses in the house of praise? The prayer this morning. Do you get, do you get that? This is the surgeon. Hallelujah. So the people who really should be carrying the burden of the work are the nurses. If a patient dies, believe me, it doesn't affect most doctors. Especially surgeons. It doesn't affect them. They just move on. It is the nurses because they are the ones who care. So the job of a minister, therefore, is to care. So if you want to have the heart of fire, you must have a caring heart. And for you to have a caring heart, you need to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. And that is why the vigil we had on Friday was very instructive because we, we, we are already empowered. But when you are empowered, the question really is that do you know what you have been empowered to do? Then are you willing to do those things? Of course, the heart is about your old person, your inner person, your intellect, your volition, your emotion. Everything about you has to do with the heart. And the fork of fire is a symbol of God's presence and the instrument of his power for cleansing and transformation. In the way either of approval or destruction, like we were told on, on, on Friday night during the vigil, Holy Ghost fire. Is different from Holy Ghost, a manifestation. Fire of the Holy Spirit is, sorry, is different from the consuming fire, rather. You need to understand that. Now, if it's consuming fire, it's for destruction. But if it's for the, it's for the Holy Ghost fire, it is just for transformation, cleansing, empowerment. But when we come to warfare, we get to that level of consuming fire. Now, we, we need to have that clear understanding because when, when, when you remember that you are a minister, you must know that you have certain instruments or, or instruments of office or weapons of war. So the Holy Ghost is an instrument of office. The consuming fire is a weapon of war. Why? Because in this assignment, you will face battles. Believe me. And one of the things I've seen in church, and that is sharing on my own personal experience, is that there are people who are spiritual enough to know where you're going in life and they will take you out. They will take you out. And they will take you out with love. 
They love you so much, they will tell you, why is Pastor Tolu always treating you like a fool? And you begin to think you are not a fool. Excuse me, if you are a child of God, the moment you think you are not a fool, you are a compound fool. Why? Because it's going to cost you so many things in life. They told me I was a dog. What did they want to do? They wanted me to stop following our leader. And they used to tell me all the things that the leader was doing that was wrong. And I used to tell them, sorry, I don't want to be part of that. Uh, he's using you. I said, if he's not using me, what, 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 why am I here? You know, we had those things in church. Pastor is using me. Excuse me. If you don't want to be used, please stop being a minister. Stop being a worker. Excuse me, sir. You earn so much money. You are one of the highest in, uh, earning, uh, income earning people in Africa or in America. You better say amen, sir. Are they not using you? If they don't use you, they cannot pay you. So if God cannot use you or get his pastor or his servant to use you, he cannot pay you. Some people say, I don't want to be used. They say, they use and dump. Excuse me, I count it joy to be used. I told that man, I said, all those people, I am the house boy. He looked at me, house boy? I said, yes. I want to say, house boy, I am the house boy. There is no, in house seeking Nigeria, I don't know about time, but even in this America, self. This is Pastor Fadel that I have not served. I have served. And when I say serve, it's self. You will not see me with them. You can't see me with photographs inside them, with them. But I have served them. These are people, if they have a need, and that's one of the principles about promotion in life. If, if you are going to be promoted in life, you must be among the first three that your boss will remember when there is a challenge. So if God cannot trust you enough to commit certain things to your hand, then you don't deserve to be in ministry. And you can never achieve any success. Hey, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a preacher, I'm a doing this, and we are doing that. He said, all this thing that we do here is not still ministry. And we get to that in the course of this discussion so in the next few days. Do you know it takes up to 20 years to discover and enter ministries after you have been laboring? Ah, pastor, it's not true. Go and ask Isaiah when you meet him in heaven. Isaiah chapter 1, war unto this, war unto this. God said the Lord. Isaiah chapter 2, war unto this, war unto this. God said the Lord. Isaiah chapter 3, war unto you. He was, you have so much righteousness. He was condemning all the unrighteous people everywhere. God was just laughing. You know, all God was doing was I just said, let us see how far his excitement can go. The guy had no knowledge. He had no revelation. The only thing is that he, he, he doesn't like what is happening. So he began to speak because he has read Bible. Like some of us have done. Oh, they said, Master, we are very happy. Even Satan was subject unto us. Jesus said, I saw Satan fell like lightning. You know what he was saying? Before you left, I had done the work. It's not you that did the work. See, anybody, including a child, a five-year-old child, can cast out demon. In the name of Jesus, demon will collapse. He does. See, the first time I prayed for two people, and they fell under anointing, I was in workers in training. You know, they taught us to close our eyes. When we were praying, I would close my eyes. My teacher said, we should come and pray for the two people. I prayed for them in Jesus' name. And I woke up. I opened my eyes. The two of them were on the floor. I was like, e. 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 What happened? You know, but on my way home, I said, anointing to be on. Anointing has come. I pray for people. They fell down and anointing without touching them. But what am I saying? It, it, it was just... It took another 15 years before I got to know where God was taking me to. Isaiah 6 was the beginning. And that was about 20 years of being in ministry. Oh, that they are the boy, that they are the way, the boy, but the boy. He had been generating myself for over 20 years before we got to know him. Through Lekki 98. T.D. Jakes. What is the sermon that made T.D. Jakes to be very popular? Woman. He had preached that sermon for 22 years. 
He preached it in his church, women's conference, five times. Before one day, the team, God blew on it. What am I saying? Don't begin to get excited because you preach, because you talk, then you say you have started ministry. Not be so. God is just trying to prepare you. It's still preparation. And that's what John was saying there that day. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me show this. Now, to talk about success. He said, accomplishment, success is an accomplishment of an aim or purpose. Now, Jeremiah 1 says, God said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations before you were formed. So, believe me, you don't need to do any work before you start working. But to fulfill that assignment, you need to be aligned in the place of fire. You can't do ministry without fire. Forget it. Some people tell me, hey, the reason why there is no manifestation, because by the grace of God, I teach today. I mean, what I do now, I teach pastors around the world. Australia, Canada, USA, South Africa, uh, UK. I teach pastors. That's what, that's what I do now. Now, I hear some pastors say, well, uh, the reason why I'm, I'm unable to manifest the supernatural as in prophesying or uh, issuing decrees or having revelational knowledge or giving word of knowledge or whatever, or doing miracles because I'm a teacher. So I say, so Pastor Adeboye is what? What is Pastor Adeboye? He's a teacher, but he's a different teacher. It's not different. It is about the consecration. Are we going to get there? Because it is your consecration that will bring the fire. Because if you don't honestly have that mindset of enduring, enduring affliction there or suffering is not just external suffering, is to also deny yourself of certain comfort in a strategic manner. For example, because I knew God has called me into ministry, I first spent five years going from teachers to teachers, learning, apart from going to Bible college or pro, uh, pastoral school, some teachers that I thought were good, I knew what they were doing, I sat under them at different levels for five years. And of course, each time I went, I went with my wife. Because the reason why some of us have a problem in ministry is that you are rising and your wife is not rising. So very soon, your wife will not understand why you are talking to more women than men. And the truth is, number one, statistically, there are more women on earth than men. So naturally, you talk to more women than men. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the point is, we, we, we spent all those times to learn. And we were learning together. But there was something I did that happened to me one year. I went to what they call a school of deliverance. I didn't go with my wife on the day one. I said, we'll go together next week. So the first day we resumed, and they said, what we are teaching you, nobody must hear. You must not show your wife. Anybody who is not in this class, who, who you show, will go mad. I said, are we in cult? Because me, I know that as I get home, it's my wife I will first show. But the one that now exposed those people that they were foolish pastors is that everything they taught us on day one was in a book that I had read four times. The book titled Pigs in the Parlor. I had read that book four times. So everything they taught me on day one is inside that book. So I said, this is not a good school. <laughs> but what am I trying to say? You still, despite that, need consecration. You need to go. So we went through that about five years together. Then after that, my teacher told me, you now needed another 10 years to prepare. And in those 10 years, we prepared. Every year of those, of the first five years of those 10 years, 40 days dry fasting. Every year for five years. 21 days dry fasting. Every year. Twice a year for 10 years. What were we doing? We were trying to connect to that fire. And I will tell you something that happened, and it's going to happen next week, in Jesus' name. The day I was baptized by immersion, I had the visitation of fire. Naked. Naked, I was going to touch it. So, and God spoke to me that day. He said, son, 
whenever you find yourself in difficult situation as a minister, remember this day and call me as a God of fire. I will respond. Now, I have told you. Now, you too can go and say, God of fire, I respond if you don't have that revelation. But you need that kind of encounter. Now, let me try and begin to wrap up here this morning. Now, there are people who are unable to manifest because they don't get to that point of becoming carriers of fire. Why? You want to be separated from your leader. They told Elisha, do you know God is taking your master today? Who are talking? The same people who are sons of the prophet. Suddenly, he became the master of Elisha alone. So they became what? Bastards. Are you a bastard? Are you going to say to Pastor Shile very soon, your pastor is going to travel when you're also here? That's a question. Are you going to tell Pastor Adeola the same thing? Or you're going to say, our pastor? When push gets to show, is it our pastor or your pastor? That will determine the kind of fire you collect. Rise up and say, Father, this morning, give me fire. Help me not be separated from the anointing that is in the house. Lord, on this first day of this discussion, give me a new beginning of joy. Baptize me with Holy Ghost and with fire. The consecration that I need, the things that I need to do to endure hardship, to prepare for your visitation, help me to do. Help me to know my calling that you are the one who has called me. And help me to understand my assignment. Help me to understand my assignment as a supporter of your work in this field. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord honor you. The Lord will bath you with his fire. In Jesus' name. Thank you.